The power that I have, which is Jesus Christ living in me, is superior than your power. And that's fact. Why you should choose Jesus over every other religion in the world? First of all, everything that Jesus preached is true. Test it in every way, shape, and form. Test it with the faith. Test it with the miracles. Test it with the wonders. Put your trust in God and see supernatural things happen. Every other religion in the world offers you a solution of peace. So they say, there's peace if you believe in Buddha, there's peace if you, if you believe in the Hindu gods, if you believe in every god, there's a god of whatever, god of the sun and all that stuff. There's a god of love, there's a god of fertility. They might offer you good things. Only one of them died for you, and that was Jesus Christ. Why do people get offended when Christians talk about how Jesus loved them enough to pay for their sins? Think about it in your own mind. If you're one of those, why do I get mad when I hear that Jesus loved me enough to die for my sins? Do you get mad because people tell you to repent? Well, that's not people telling you to repent. That's God saying, you're a sinful creation. The reason why I even sent Jesus to pay for your sins is because you're a sinner and you need to be cleansed. Otherwise, you cannot have anything to do with me. So in God's goodness, God sent Jesus Christ to the world. For God so loved the world, as in like God loved his creation enough to give creation an opportunity to be saved and an opportunity to escape hell. And most importantly, an opportunity for a relationship with him with God the Father himself because anything that is profane anything that is impure it just takes one little speck of impurity to separate you from God completely if you had one little speck of impurity you couldn't even talk to God you couldn't even there's no way for humanity in its fallen state to have any sort of relationship with God without Jesus Christ why Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the perfect Lamb of God Jesus Christ is the atonement for humanity Jesus Christ is the one on behalf who God allowed to sacrifice to pay for your mistakes it's not just about having a new life it's not just about hitting the reset button yes it is yeah sure that can apply to your life if you repent and turn to Jesus, you're turning a new leaf. It's a new life. It's a new chance. It's a second chance at life. Because yeah, when you turn to Jesus and you repent with God, He forgets your sinful past. No other God dealt with the issue of sin except for Jesus. And who is Jesus? Jesus is God in the flesh. He is God and He was man at the same time. He went through things that humans go through, except He never sinned. He was tempted in every way, shape, or form. He went through afflictions. Jesus Himself, God Himself, went through afflictions. He mourned at the death of Lazarus, though He brought Him back. He mourned because people didn't have faith in Him. People doubted Him. After all they had seen, the people that walked closest to Him doubted Him. And Jesus thought, everything you have seen, everything that I have showed you, and you still doubt me. That's why Jesus' heart was broken. That's why he weeps when Lazarus died because Mary and Martha went up to him and told him, if only you were here, he would not have died. If you look at Abraham in the Old Testament, Abraham knew that when God demanded Isaac as a sacrifice, Isaac was as good as dead. But guess what? And it talks about it in Hebrews and it talks about it in Genesis how Abraham's faith was so strong that he realized, well, even if Isaac is dead, God can raise him up from the dead, no? He is the resurrection. So Jesus was weeping because all the miracles his disciples had seen in his time yet they still doubted him when they walked right next to him they walked with him they saw everything that he did yet they still doubted first of all those other religions were introduced by fallen angels you read enoch i've read enoch and in enoch it talks about how the angels introduced worship to different deities the demons so you're not worshiping a god you're worshiping a demon hinduism is demonic everything that has to, i'm gonna say something that's gonna be very controversial and it might not even be well received because you might have grown up in this but this is the truth the truth is when you worship saints even in catholicism you're worshiping a deity behind the statue you're not praying to mary you're not praying to saint matthew you're not praying to saint peter you're not praying to saint luke you're not praying to saint judas you're praying to a demon behind the statue the statue is just a form of veneration but behind the statue there's a demon when you pray to mary you're not praying to real mary there's only one intercessor the word of god says in first timothy there's only one intercessor between humanity and god and that is jesus christ and jesus christ alone it is dangerous guys when you when even catholicism is a form of demon worship because when you think about it you're praying to saints everything that has to do with hinduism everything that has to do with, with an idol buddha those things cannot hear you those those things are lifeless they're dead they have no power and there's anything supernatural that happens it's because there's a demon behind that thing there's a demonic entity behind that stuff that's that's causing things to work manifesting you're talking to demons the astrology was taught by fallen angels by the watchers and have rebelled against god and sinned with women and fornicated with women the watchers are the ones that taught astrology the watchers are the ones that taught people how to communicate with the stars not astronomy astrology as in signs those zodiac signs all that was taught by the fallen angels the evil principalities of the air the demons 
Now there's a theory that says that the demons are the disembodied spirits from the Nephilim. There's some speculation there. But everything else that has to do with astrology or false religion was taught by the fallen angels because they were sticking out their middle finger to God. They were saying, Ha God, I'm gonna see humanity to rebel against you and to worship a counterfeit form of what they're supposed to do. Humanity was created to worship God and to have a relationship with God, to walk with God. Humanity was never created to be apart from God. God's original intention for humanity was to have a relationship with God that was intimate. But all that got messed up because man gave a place to the devil. And when man gave a place to the devil, later on they also gave place to witchcraft, they gave a place to idol worship, to false religions. You might say, well I grew up in this so how is it possible that I could have been wrong all my life? My friend, that is one of the most tragic forms of deception that a person can go through. To say, you grew up all your entire life knowing one thing, just to find out that that one thing that you grew up all your life knowing, talking about false religions, Catholicism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Mormon, any other sector of religion outside of the real biblical form of, of relationship with God, all that is deception my friend. But I'm telling you this so God can open your eyes and remove the scales from your eyes so you can see the truth. And how do, you, how do I know that Jesus Christ sees the truth? Power alone. My friend, there are miracles, supernatural wonders and miracles when we call upon Jesus. And yes, warlocks and witches have power to shift the spiritual realm too and they have power to turn the sticks into snakes. But the power that comes from the Holy Spirit, the power that comes from God, the power that comes from Jesus, Yeshua, that power will always surpass your witchcraft power. That power will always crush the head of the snake. That power, I'm making an Old Testament reference here. If I tell a stick to turn into a snake and you do the same, I guarantee you 100% the snake, the stick that I turned into a snake because of the Holy Spirit, because of God, it will eat your serpent. My serpent will always eat your serpent. I'm making an Old Testament reference when Moses converted the stick to a serpent. The power of God will always trump over all counterfeit form of power. You might have power. You might say, I can do this and that. I have the ability to shape shift this and that. I have the ability to manifest and all this and that. Your power is defeated by Jesus. The power that I have, which is Jesus Christ living in me is superior than your power. And that's facts. And there are many infinite reasons why Jesus Christ is superior to everybody else. Check it out for yourself, guys. You want, you, you think I'm lying? Ask God in a simple prayer. Lord, show me your heart. Lord, show me that you're real. Lord, let me know that you hear me. Ask him, Lord, let me know that you're real. Better off, tell this to God. Lord, I repent of my sins. I turn away from my life and I want to try you. Not as in a way of trying to test God as a like to, with, with a bad intention, but try God as a like, test him to see that he is good, that he is real, that he wants a relationship with you. Ask God, Father, I repent of my sins. I want to seek you out for myself, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray for an encounter right where I'm at. Pray the Holy Spirit gives you an encounter right where you're at right now. Father God, I pray that anybody watching this video feel your touch, feel your heart. I pray that you open their eyes, Father God. Give them a perception of you, Father God. Show them your heart and the Spirit, my Lord. I pray that you lead them to repentance genuinely and that they be born again. They repent of their sins and turn to you, Father God. I pray that you give them a supernatural desire for them to get baptized and leave behind the past and come alive in you. I pray they turn into a new creation through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, my Lord, I pray they see how superior you are to everything else. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Give God a try.